Hey, Sabrina, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So you're living far, far away from home right now. Can you tell me where you're from originally and where you are right now? I'm from Wild Cove, White Bay, near the Bayvert Peninsula. Um, and I'm living in Hanoi in Vietnam. Wow, so that's like a world away from here. Can you explain to me what it's like? Like, how is it different from Newfoundland? <laughs> how is it different from Newfoundland? Well, <laughs> I am in a city of 10 million people. Wow. <laughs> in a country that is smaller than Newfoundland with 90 million people in it. What is daily life like? Like, how does it compare to, to living on the rock? It's a lot faster. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, there's people everywhere. <laughs> Traffic is uh very crazy uh, there's a lot of motorbikes everywhere i don't speak the language <laughs> was it hard to adjust when you first moved there yes and no i lived in south korea before i moved here so i think i had had a little bit of practice um but when i moved here i didn't know anyone so yes it, it was an adjustment but it didn't take very long i got used to it let's talk a bit about the pandemic so what was it like when the pandemic struck it was scary being um, a foreigner in a country that's not your own and not really knowing what is going on. You're living in a very uh, concentrated area. How did they keep the numbers so low and how did they approach the pandemic in the beginning? They approached it extremely proactively. I mean, I'm a bus ride from China. where We have a, a, sh a very porous border with China. So I think they, we're very proactive in, 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 in taking it on. They closed the borders almost immediately. Um, and they, we went into a lockdown in the first week of April, I believe, but there weren't even that many cases in the city that I live in. Um, but we went into a countrywide lockdown and that lasted for about three weeks. They really, um, focused on like community transmission and, and contact tracing and stuff like that. They were, there were tests available for anyone who, who thought they might need one. Yeah, they were extremely proactive. There were everyone who came into the country during that time, because obviously this is a massive tourist destination. So everyone that were, was still coming into the country or were new, they were brought into like government quarantine camps that were, that were like erected all around the country. Um, and that went on for quite a while. And so that's also helped too, I guess, in the long run of keeping numbers low or non-existent. What, 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 what are things like right now? There's no COVID. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, we had a second outbreak in July. Even when that happened, I was, this was in a city in the, in the central part of the country. And I was there for a holiday at the time. And when I came back to Hanoi, they had, I think there were, f I want to say 50,000 people that were in, in Da Nang during that outbreak. And everyone that came back to Hanoi, 50,000 of them, they had us tested in a matter of a couple weeks. Every person that were, was apparently in that, in that area during that month was tested twice. And so talking about daily life, um, where do you work and what do you do? I teach ESL online through a Chinese company. Has it changed at all since COVID struck? For me, which is really terrible, it was better because I teach Chinese kids and during, during COVID, they were all at home. Normally, I can work about 3 till 8 p.m. during Monday to Friday, but during the COVID, during the epidemic in, in China, I could teach 12 hours a day if I wanted to. And so when you're not working, um, I see some artwork behind you. You're also an artist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I paint and draw portraits. <laughs> and how long have you been doing that? More seriously, maybe like four or five years. You're not getting home right now. Um, when do you think you will be able to return to Newfoundland? I had hoped that I would be there for Christmas this year, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'd like to return in the spring. The situation is the same in the rest of Canada. Um, I don't know why I would trade in the freedom that I have right now to come home. So yeah, it depends on what the situation is like in six months time, I guess. And are you feeling homesick at all? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm uh, approaching, I guess, I don't know, 
15 months since I've been home and I usually come home every year mm -hmm. so I definitely missed it this summer but um it's okay how are you coping are you staying in touch with friends and family back home yeah yeah I speak to my 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 parents usually once a week my dad has COPD and my nan is 92 so I definitely get concerned but I'm very grateful that everything in Newfoundland is okay right now so Sabrina before I let you go I just want to give you a chance to send a message back home is there anything you want to say to friends and family yeah I want to say hi to my nan and that I love you and miss you <laughs> well I'm hoping you get back sooner rather than later and stay safe in Vietnam thank you very much and it was nice to talk to you